deviation of gases from ideal behavior the deviation of gases from ideal behavior requires the deviation from each gas laws to be studied so first we'll see deviation from boyle's law according to this law at constant temperature the product of pressure and volume for a fixed mass of a gas remains constant that is pv equals to constant if we plot a graph of pv against p it should be a straight line that is value of pv is constant for a boyle's law so this dotted line indicates that it is ideal gas but in actual case it is not so it is seen that for nitrogen and methane pv value decreases with increase in pressure which shows that these gases are more compressible than boyle's law required this decrease in pv values continues passes through minimum and then increases with increase in pressure that the compressibility is now less than expected also the exceptional behavior of hydrogen and helium which shows continuous increase in pv values from the start which is due to the less compressibility of the gases than ideal gas effect of temperature on deviation from ideal behavior so over here when pv values for nitrogen are plotted against pressure at different temperature say t1 t2 t3 and t4 the curves are obtained as shown in this figure it is seen that as the temperature is raised the dip in the curve becomes smaller and smaller and at a particular temperature the curve appears to be almost horizontal that is equal to that dotted line that is for ideal gas thus the boyle's law is obeyed within the range of pressure at that temperature and that temperature is p4 so this temperature is called as boyle's temperature so over here we can say that below boyle's temperature the value of pv first decreases approaches minimum and then increases with increase in pressure while above boyle's temperature the value of pv increases continuously with increase in pressure next is deviation from charles law according to this law at constant pressure the volume of a given mass of a gas increases or decreases by 1 upon 273 of its volume at 0 degree celsius for every degree rise or fall in temperature thus the coefficient of increase or decrease in volume for all gases should be 1 upon 273 that is 0.003661 and it should not only be same for all gases but should also remain constant for the entire range of pressure and temperature but in actual practice the temperature coefficient of any real gas is never equal to that it varies from one gas to another and is also not constant over the entire range of pressure and temperature thus only ideal gas obeys the charles law for all values of pressure and temperature whereas real gas always shows deviation from ideal behavior next is deviation from avogadro law the avogadro law states that under identical condition of temperature and pressure equal volume of all gases contain equal number of molecules thus one mole of a gas will occupy a volume of 22.4 dm cube at stp but it is found to be different for different gases the deviation of avogadro law from the ideal values are found to be more in case of those gases which are easily liquefiable for example carbon dioxide and ammonia next is reason for deviation from ideal behavior 
So which are the main reason why Boyle's law, Charles' law and Avogadro law shows deviation from their ideal behavior? For this, two postulates of kinetic theory of gases which do not appear to hold good under all conditions. First is, volume occupied by the molecule themselves is negligible compared to the total volume of the gas. So this is according to postulates of kinetic theory of gases. But in actual case, the molecule of a gas do occupy certain volume because gas can be liquefied and solidifies at low temperature and high pressure. This suggests that molecules of a gas has appreciable volume. Therefore, above postulate is not valid at high pressure and low temperature. And the other reason is the force of attraction between the gas molecule is almost negligible. So this is the second postulate of kinetic theory of gases. If this assumption was strictly true that there is no force of attraction between the gas molecules, then the liquefaction of gas would not have been possible. At low pressure and high temperature, the molecules of a gas are quite far apart and effect of attractive forces are negligible. But at high pressure and low temperature, the molecules of gas are very close to each other and the effect of attractive force is appreciable. Hence, above postulate does not hold good true at high pressure and low temperature. That is, there is no force of attraction between the gaseous molecules. Now, we know that real gases shows deviation from its ideal behavior. And this deviation of real gas from its ideal behavior is always expressed in terms of a quantity called compressibility factor, which is given by equation PV equals to Z nRT, where Z is compressibility factor. If Z is equal to 1, then the gas is ideal gas. If Z is less than 1, then gas is more compressible than ideal gas. If Z is greater than 1, then gas is less compressible than ideal gas. Now we'll see one numerical based on this. Calculate the compressibility factor of a gas if 10 moles of a gas occupies a volume of 20 dm cube at a pressure of 1.0135 into 10 raised to 6 newton per meter square. So in this case pressure is given 1.0135 into 10 raised to 6 newton per meter square. Volume is given 20 dm cube so we convert it in terms of meter cube by multiplying it by 10 raised to minus 3. Number of mole is given that is n equals to 10 and temperature is 298 and value for r is 8.314. By substituting this value in equation PV equals to ZNRT, so we can calculate value for Z as 0.8181. Next is Joule Thomson effect. Joule and Thomson observed that when a real gas is allowed to expand adiabatically by passing it through a porous plug from a region of high pressure to the region of low pressure then the temperature of gas decreases. This phenomena of lowering in temperature is known as joule thomson effect. The experimental arrangement consists of thermally insulated tube fitted with a porous plug in the middle and two frictionless piston on the either sides. Two sensitive thermometers are placed on the either side of the porous plug. The real gas is kept between the piston A and B at two different pressure P1 and P2 where P1 is greater than P2. Then the real gas is allowed to expand adiabatically from a region of high pressure to the region of low pressure through a porous plug. The temperature T1 and T2 on the either side of porous plug are measured. A fall in temperature is observed. During Joule-Thomson effect, enthalpy of system remains 
constant. Hence, Joule-Thomson effect is also known as isoenthalpic process. The rate of change of temperature with pressure when enthalpy remains constant is called as Joule-Thomson coefficient. This is zero for an ideal gas, but may be positive or negative. The cooling effect is observed at relatively low temperature, but if the temperature is high, then instead of cooling, the gas becomes hot, that is, Joule-Thomson coefficient is negative. For every gas, there is a temperature at which Joule-Thomson coefficient is zero, that is, neither heating nor cooling of gas takes place on passage through the porous membrane and that temperature is called as inversion temperature of that gas.